The United Soybean Board says the use of soybean seed treatments is increasing. It says the industry estimates 60 to 70 percent of soybeans planted in 2014 were treated, up from 30 percent in 2008. Earlier this week, we talked about those inputs with Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Lauren Giesler. We started by asking Lauren why soybean seed treatments aren't always effective. Well, one of the things that we see with, with seed treatments is that we don't always have conditions that are perfect for seedling disease. So last year was a year that we had really cool wet soil conditions, and so that was a situation where those seed treatments were going to show response. Many times our soybean farmers will put the seed in the ground, and then if it's warm enough, mm -hmm. you know, we won't, we won't see a big response on that. Uh, with the with the treatment but i think it feels you know with any history particularly here you know again we're in a really cool time you know getting later in the season it's still really cold we could face our we could be faced with some some really cold soil conditions again when you look at soybean prices in this year compared to the last few years maybe especially two years ago or so it's the margins we know are going to be a little bit tighter so as you start to think about ways that you can cut back how does that relate to seed treatments well, I think when we're looking at seed treatments for, for any of our farmers that are, are trying to push that window and plant earlier, you know, I think they're going to be really a necessity. Um, anybody that's got a history of a stand problem, you know, if you, if you put it in the ground and you get some significant rains. Now, the, the part of the seed treatment that I see that, that we could remove, you know, to save a few dollars would be the insecticide part. Uh, the insurance that you're looking for, the protection that you need is really going to be in that fungicide. So, you know, using just that seed treatment fungicide is, you know, 90% or more of the time going to be fine for what you need. Mm -hmm. And in some situations, you may not see any economic gain from that. But, again, if we're cool and we're below that 60 degree optimum germination time, that's where we're going to see a benefit. What's the relationship between using a seed treatment and plant population? Well, that's another thing. A lot of our soybean farmers are, are planting populations that are really, you know, exceeding what we would need for <clears throat> the same yield they're, they're having. So, you know, all of our studies we're planting at 140,000 seed per acre. Um, for sure, when you get into some, you know, heavy residue situations, maybe you get into some some soils that, you know, may crust these types of things. You know, then we, then we get in conversations about, you know, upping populations. But I think there's a lot of producers out there that could reduce that population significantly. Um, use that seed treatment fungicide and, and be in great shape and save some dollars in the process. Some of the market analysts see a lot of soybean <coughs> acres going in this year. In a situation that a farmer would go soybean on soybean or continue soybean uh, rotation, is there anything unique about that? Well, I think the unique thing is that, that anytime you continuous crop like that, you, you know your disease potential is higher for several factors or several pathogens out there that we have. So um, in that situation, you know, the first thing I, I would look at is, you know, does the field have cyst nematode or not? Uh, because that's going to be critical. If you have soybean cyst nematode uh, and you're putting beans on beans, that's a perfect scenario, especially if you came in that field with the same variety you grew the year before and you had resistance. I mean, you're just going to cultivate that population to reproduce on it. Um, the other ones, you know, a lot of our diseases, the rotation doesn't affect as much. Um, because it's it's going to be in the soil and it's soil born, but that said, um, if they had significant problems in 2014, I'd plan for that in 2015 for sure and make sure you've got the treatments for it. One of, one of the problems that we had that was pretty significant in 2014 were some of our fields being hit by Phytophthora even later in the season. So that would be another one that that for sure, if if we had a field that we knew we had Phytophthora present in that field trying to get a variety in there that's got some resistance, some high tolerance scores. Uh, again, it's later, they haven't made, they've already made their selections, but hopefully they've got some in the mix that they could position in those fields. And then again, with the seed treatments, making sure they're putting on enough uh, of the right products in there. And so with the Phytophthora fields, we talk about up in the rates of, of Apron Excel with Syngenta, with Allegiance component from Bayer. You know, those types of active ingredients are what we're going to really need to get that seed up. Uh, get it established, let resistance and, and those tolerance scores kick in when that plant's good and healthy. If a grower didn't get his field, his or her field samples for soybean cyst nematode last fall, would you still recommend doing it in the spring before planting? Well, you can. The unfortunate thing right now is most of our farmers have made their decision on variety. Um, but it would, be, it would be worthwhile to do that if you're going continuous beans and you have no idea if you've got some different varieties in the mix and what you've ordered to go ahead and, and, and sample those fields and, and look at where you're going to position some of those yet.